Hello everyone, welcome to Michael's Vlog in the Philippines. Today we're going to be talking about my findings on, you know, going through the process of trying to buy a vehicle in the Philippines. Now, I do want to make a disclaimer. I did not actually buy a vehicle, but we're in the process of considering uh, buying a vehicle. Now, I also have my laptop in front of me today. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking to see if I cover everything that I want to in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that I would say is you want to make sure you do not buy a limit. And I think that applies, obviously, no matter where you're at in the world. And so I did a lot of research before I started going to dealerships, looking at some things that could possibly come up. And, you know, honestly, I didn't find anything specific to the Philippines. So I used a lot of the information that I could access in America. And one of the big things that they told me to look out for is just to make sure that, you know, there's not a repair shop in the in the car dealership where they're painting the vehicles, because that, that's a huge red flag that they're trying to cover something up, possibly. So, you know, when I got to one of the dealerships and I saw them painting the vehicle, I was like, oh, that's a red flag. So you probably want to stay away from things like that. And I asked them how much the vehicle costs, actually. And they told me seven hundred and fifty thousand pesos, which is like $15,000. And I was like, well, $15,000 for that vehicle, I can buy something near brand new that's never been painted before. And I don't have to wonder and worry if it's, you know, a good car or not. So obviously I didn't even entertain that dealership anymore because of that particular issue. Uh, one thing you do want to do, I think is, you know, know some of the things to look at, like look at the tires, make sure it has enough tread on it. Um, you know, make sure there's no rust under the vehicle. But in addition to all these things, also, I recommend hiring someone to help you inspect the vehicle, uh, a professional, a third party that's not connected to the, the dealership in any way. Um, let's go ahead and, and, and move on to the next thing. Um, you know, when I was looking at the vehicles, I looked on Car Moody. I looked on a bunch of different places and one of the big things that I noticed, if you're purchasing a vehicle that you want to be familiar with, like an American style vehicle, it can get really expensive. Like I'm talking about it can cost you twice as much or more for an American brand vehicle used or brand new. It doesn't really matter. And that's unfortunate. So you might have to get a little bit out of your comfortable zone and get comfortable trying out a vehicle that is not necessarily an American vehicle because it can get quite expensive. I mean, ridiculous expensive. So that's probably not a route you want to go unless you got a lot of money and you just want to throw it towards the vehicle, then that's your business. And I know some of you are probably thinking, well, I'll just import my vehicle. Nope. Same issue. Uh, from what I read online, and I'm not saying this information is 100% accurate, but from my research, it can cost you twice as much <laughs> or more, I mean, maybe not twice as much, but it can cost you more than the cost of the vehicle is what I read online. They didn't give a specific percentage amount, but if it's going to cost you more than the vehicle itself, then it's probably not worth importing the vehicle because that's just too costly. So um, let's go ahead and move on to my next point here. You probably do not want to purchase a vehicle with a loan. I've spoke with one of the locals here and they're paying as much as 38 percent interest once they pay the whole vehicle off. So that's a big percentage. When I say 38% interest, I actually mean 38% more. So let me be correct in how I say this. They're paying 38% more than what the vehicle's actually supposed to cost. So if the vehicle costs, you know, 100% is representative of $100, then you're paying $138 for the vehicle. Obviously, you know, we know that the vehicle's not going to cost $138, but with the 38%. We know the vehicles cost more than that, but as an example, if you bought a vehicle for $100, it's going to end up costing you $138 for the vehicle once it's fully paid off, inclusive of your interest. So that's probably not the route that you want to go as well. Uh, moving on to the next point here, you know, unfortunately, we're always going to be foreigners, you know, and when they see your foreigner face, there is a possibility that they're going to give you the foreigner price. Uh, when I went to one of the dealerships, you know, that was painting one of the vehicles and I asked him how much it cost. It was 750,000 pesos, which is like $15,000. That vehicle was definitely overpriced for what year it is, because obviously you can buy a vehicle that is pretty much almost brand new, like a 2017. 
I found a, a Ford EcoSport for 650,000 pesos for a 2017 that just had a few thousand kilometers on it. So, I mean, that right there shows you can buy a decent vehicle for that same price and you don't have to worry if it has any issues. In terms of, you know, the best value for a car, I would say the Vios is the best value. And that's a common taxi car that they drive around here. But if you just want a reliable vehicle, from what I heard, the Vios is fairly reliable. You can buy a, a almost brand new Vios, I think for like 500,000 pesos, which is like $10,000, anywhere from 500 to 550. You can get a, a brand new Vios. You can get them cheaper than that, actually, depending on how far back, you know, in years that you want to go. You probably get a 2015 for 400 to 500,000 pesos, which is like eight to $10,000. Again, these numbers can vary quite dramatically depending on the mileage or the kilometers in this case, because we're in the Philippines, and the condition of the vehicle. So you have to look at that and evaluate it from your own point of view. Uh, the second best value for a car, in my opinion, is the Ford EcoSport, which I mentioned is only 650,000 pesos for like a 2017. At least that's one of the deals that I found here with a few thousand kilometers on it in mint condition. No issues that I was able to identify. But again, whether you're buying a used vehicle that's really old or a used vehicle that's fairly new somewhat, but a few years old so that you don't lose so much of that depreciation value, I still recommend that you hire someone to look at the car, inspect it, and make sure that everything is okay. Uh, you know, I'm not a mechanic, so I can't inspect the car. And I don't know if you are, but if you are, maybe you can inspect it yourself and you'll know what to look for. But uh, those are my thoughts on finding a car in the Philippines. I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video here and check and see if my camera stopped recording because it's still having the same issue and I do not know why. Okay, I'm back and it looks like my camera is not having that issue where it shuts off randomly. So I believe it's my SD card. That's the issue. I switched over to my 64 gigabyte uh, SD card this time and it does not seem to have this issue anymore. So a simple issue as simple as an SD card is why my video kept shutting off on me. So anyway, um, just, you know, just to recap, you don't know what you could be buying. Make sure it's not a lemon. Get a car person to help you inspect it. Pay them. Make sure you trust them and they're not just collecting money from you, which is why you need to do research on what you should be looking at as if you were a car person to inspect the vehicle so that you can look and see if they're looking at all the things they should be looking at. They should be looking to check the tire treads. Are the tire treads fairly low? That's going to be expensive. So you should probably negotiate your price down. Is there rust under the vehicle? That could be problematic. Is there a bend in the frame of the vehicle? Um, you know, all those different things. Did, did, did they reset the air codes on the vehicle to, you know, make it look like it's no issues with the car and therefore the engine light doesn't come on? Did they reset the odometer to make it look like the kilometers are lesser than what it really is? Because when they reset the odometer, if you look at the gas pedal and it looks super eroded, then you'll know that there's no way it can only be a few thousand kilometers and the, the foot pedal for the gas looks like it's been driven for five years. So, you know, you need to hire a proper person. Uh, American cars are twice as expensive, possibly, or more. If you purchase via loan, you're going to get ripped off most likely 38%, you know, upward extra cost for you. Uh, foreign face means that you're probably going to pay a higher price unless you know your stuff. So make sure you know what the vehicle should cost. Um, best value car is a Vios. Second best value car is an EcoSport. So that is my recap of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you stay subscribed. And if you are a new person watching this video, get subscribed to my channel. I hope this video was helpful for those who are considering staying in the Philippines on a more long-term basis. And you want to have the freedom to get yourself around the city without any issues. Now, once we do get to a point where we actually do buy a vehicle, and I don't know how long that's going to be exactly. It could be a year from now. It could be two years. I don't know exactly. Really, my priority right now is just getting the house stuff taken care of. And when that's completed, we'll have a discussion about dealing with houses. And that's just a whole nother story in itself. To And I don't even know what that process is going to be fully. I'm still learning. So that's why I said I don't know exactly how long that's going to take. 
But uh, I think that covers everything for this video. And I look forward to seeing new subscribers. And if you subscribe, I'm going to make new content. So encourage me to make more content by subscribing and leaving comments. Thanks again and see you on, in future videos on Michael's Wall. Have a nice day.